2024 is upon us with a packed schedule of football with the FA Cup, AFCON and of course Premier League action. So why not beat the January Blues and watch every game with the atmosphere it deserves down at your local Green King pub? Don't settle for a dodgy stream. If it is on the telly, it's bound to be on at your local Green King Sports pub on some of their huge HD screens. If you download the Green King Sports app, you'll also receive 10% off every single drink whenever there's a game on. Now, the venue offers a range of low and non-alcoholic drinks too. So if you're like me, you're doing dry January, trying to fight the urges, doesn't mean you have to settle. So yeah, make sure you get yourself down to Green King this January to enjoy a range of sports and also a range of alcoholic options, whether that be alcoholic or non-alcoholic. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to the Talking Wolves podcast. I'm your host, Matt Cooper, and today I'm joined alongside none other than Dave as a party. It's just us two today, but uh, Dave, how are you keeping, mate? How's things? Very well, thank you, mate. Yeah, a lot more upbeat, especially with the football. We're doing all right, aren't we? Six, six matches unbeaten and fingers crossed. We obviously carry that <laughs> on uh, next, next weekend as well, but yeah, all good. Thank you, mate. Yeah, no no jaw tonight. He's been let down by one of our unofficial sponsors, Grilly. I say unofficial sponsors. <laughs> Dave always always um, bigs up Grilly. Many establishments across the Midlands, but unfortunately, they've let him down with a uh, collection tonight. Yeah, but the ranges. thing, is, the thing is, I, I'm sure. I mean, George uses the one in Starridge, which is untested for me. I've, I've not tried that one before, and I'm sure he got ill the last time he used it. So I'm surprised he's giving it another go. To be fair, but um, yeah, I can't. I mean, I can speak for the Stafford Road and Newbridge Grillets, but not the uh, uh, Kings Winford one, unfortunately. Mm. I mean, we give them that many shout outs on it, and I have been in it, and it is quite good. I think I had some wings last time I we went, but yeah, it's good. It's good. But if you are listening to this, A, sponsor us, B, sort out the, the stuff. I'm going to, I'm going to, I might DM them soon or at the end of the at the end of the season, see if I can, even if we can just get like a grilled black card or something like that, just so we can <laughs> sort of limited or one, one a week or something, like, you know. So. No, you'd be out, they'd be out of business, mate. You're in there all oh. the time. <laughs> If you go to, if you go to, uh, yeah. So no, no George this week. Um, but Dave, it's it's a it's a, it's a massive week, really, isn't it? Uh, the tale of two Albions. We'll start with um, we'll start with Brighton Hove Albion last night at the Amex. Mm. I was I was feeling pretty confident coming into this, but I thought it was going to be a bit of an acid test for this squad as to where they are, and especially after last season, the, the thumping under Lopetegui. And to be honest, Dave, I thought I thought we were unlucky not to win it. Yeah, it, it's, it was an interesting game because I think a lot of the attention was on, obviously, the West Brom game. So even when I went to preview this match, I was there like, oh, you have, I actually sort of forgot we've got this Premier League game coming up. So there was no real attention on it. And then I think when you looked at it and you looked at our previous results against Brighton, um, it's crazy to think, you know, a lot of the time there's games against certain teams that you almost just write off. But I think quietly, Wolves fans were, well, sort of quietly confident going into this game. Not necessarily that we'd win, but we, we'd give them a game. Away from home, we've not been fantastic. But like you said, it was it was going to be a really interesting battle to see whereabouts Wolves are. Even the, the home fixture against Brighton, I think that, that flattered them a lot, the scoreline. I felt at times we competed with them. I think Fabio mm-hmm. had a great chance. Ryan Aitnori had a great chance in that game. And it could have been a completely different result. Um, but yeah, like you said, I, I felt we competed with Brighton. I felt Gary O'Neill went with a clear game plan in mind. And that was to let Brighton have the ball. And, and us to try and launch counter-attacks to win the game. And we're unlucky not to, to do so and walk out with three points, if I'm honest. Yeah, I think... Um... I think on another day you might walk out there with three points, but then on another day I think you might come away with nothing. nothing. In yeah, terms of nil nils go, I thought it was quite an entertaining fixture. I've seen a lot of football Twitter accounts say, "Oh, how crap that was nil nil," but I thought it, I thought it was quite an, an, an entertaining game. It had a bit of everything. But one thing I noticed, Dave, is to start with, um, Wolves were were trying to press Jason Steele or Luke Steele, if your name's Jermaine Genus. Um, <laughs> And I just don't, I just, I just don't know why they did. It. I think they learnt very quickly that he's playing right through us here because it was that, it was that ball straight up to the, to the, the wide forwards. They were just coming inside, and he was just picking them out, and every single time they were unlocking us. So thankfully they identified that that wasn't the best thing to do. But they tried to do that in the reverse fixture, didn't they? Yeah, I, to be to be fair, there were there was once or twice where he sort of dwelled on the ball and and he's 
distribution very rarely to be honest but it it, it allowed us to create some chances because he did put certain defenders under pressure but saying that I felt there was one pass right to probably in the first sort of 10 15 minutes where he gets the ball and just like floats it across the ground almost about 30 nice. 40 yards and he did the exact same thing at Molyneux before I remember when he, he sort of picked out the striker with one ball across the ground I was like how, how has he picked that pass out and I think obviously that's how Brighton have identified him you know he's he's been milling around sort of there sort of a second third choice goalkeeper in the lower sort of football leagues and but obviously he's good with his feet and that's what they want him to be and I say, I say that, you know, it's poss possibly a tad harsh on him because I thought we forced him into some really smart stops last mm. night as well. But, um, yeah, I, I, I think the distribution is a big thing. And I, I know I'm sure you mentioned it, The again, going back to the home fixture, the distribution comparison between Joe Cesar, who, again, I don't want to, you know, disrespect him too much because I thought he had an OK game. But in terms of his distribution yesterday, was poor again compared to that of Steele. So, I think... The goalkeeper will be an interesting one because the last two transfer windows have been rumours of us potentially looking at a goalkeeper. But if we want to play the way that we want to play out the back and so on at times, I think we do need to try and find someone that's slightly better with their feet. Yeah, I think as well, though, for Brighton, you need you, you need the, the notes from the players to be able to receive the ball as well. Yeah. It's, you know, I'm, I'm always one to jump on a goalkeeper's back when they've not done something right. But a lot of the time for Saar, it was just getting away from the goal because there's... There's no real other Nothing option. On. You've got, you've got Neto really. You when when he was coming short, people were going long. When he was going long, players were coming short. It was a bit, it was a bit all over the place in that regard. But there is a there is a stark contrast. That doesn't mean Jose Sar is a bad keeper because I think shot stopping was he's one of the probably one of the best. But then you compare him to the way that Brighton build from the back and just like bypass an opposition press and get out. Maybe, like you said, David, is something to address. But mm -hmm. a goalkeeper who's fantastic with his feet, also a decent mm -hmm. shot stopper, mate. Gone are the days where they might cost you five million. You're probably yeah. looking at like 30, 40 million for a keeper, which unfortunately gone are the days that we spend the keep that money on a keeper. Unless it's uh, is it is it Diogo um, Silva? Costa. Costa, Costa, that's the Porto yeah. keeper. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. For the top is the Portuguese name generator. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, I, I, no, I agree, I, and I think um, it wasn't just Sarah. I felt like early stages of the game, we really struggled at times to get our foot on the ball and and, and create chances through possession. Really, yeah. I don't like you know, like I said at the start of the the pod, I think generally Gary O'Neill probably went there with a plan to allow Brighton to have the ball and launch our counter attacks, which I think at times we did quite well, uh, but it was frustrating sometimes. There was nothing on. Could see Neto was getting frustrated, you know, swinging his arms in the air quite a few times last night, but. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the plan was there just to allow, you know, as long as we didn't make any mistakes defensively, which we pretty much didn't, we, we had a very good chance of getting something out of, the, out of the game. To be fair, though, like, uh, as much as I was enjoying watching Brighton zip it past us, like one touch, two touch football, because they, they are so good at it and it's great to watch. I still felt that we restricted them to not as many chances as I probably would have had against other sides or or, or previous wall sides. I think out of out of possession, we still managed to try and control the game as yeah. a, a, as as best as we could. Um, but like I said, we still created chances. But that is that is the way that that is the blueprint away from home, isn't it, Dave? Even against like the lesser sides, it's soak soak it up a little bit. And you know, Totty, Dawson, and Kiltman are fantastic at defending their own box. And then you've got your outlets in your, in your, in your front two, in Cunha and Neto, and then also Samaido down the right, which, again, I thought Samaido last night, mate, uh, he, he was excellent. Even picking passes going forward, but defensively, which we know is Brighton's his kryptonite, but I think he made up for it last night. Yeah, he, he had a really good game defensively. He was... He was great. I mean, a couple of the last ditch challenges that he'd put in were, you know, were really, really solid. Um, and the last couple of games, you know, we, we bigged him up on the la on last week's pod. Um, I think people that comment on the podcast or videos who normally sort of say how disappointed they are in Samado are sort of starting to realise, hold on, you know, he's, well, he's, he's starting to pick up his form a little bit as well. So, um, big plus. You know, and I think even Doc, to be fair to him, on the left on the left hand side, I know some people look at that and think flipping heck. But at the end of the day, Hugo Bueno's been nowhere near good enough um, since you know since his injury uh, and returning. And and Doc, 
you know, defensively is probably better than Bueno. You know, those those back posts, crosses coming in. I think yeah, Doc yeah. tends to deal with those quite well. Um, and even going forward at times, you know, he's, he's an athlete, he's, isn't he? For that, yeah, for that sure. Yeah, keeper, if if so, I can keep it on the pitch. <laughs> the, yeah, there, there were there were at times him and Totti. I felt dwelled on the ball a little bit too long, and and, and it, it's made made things difficult for us to play out from the back. Um, but definitely, I think you know, ongoing, he's he's not a bad option to have. And if you he, you know, he's almost. I know Johnny's probably going to go, but Johnny, you could always rely. He always play on the left for Wolves, but, but you know he's always a decent option on the right as well. Um, if Doc, if we can do that for for Doc as well. I think it's a really decent option to have. Yeah, I think he did all right last night. To be fair, he. I mean, it's ain't Nora's position to lose, isn't it? But I, I feel sure. like I've got a lot more, a lot more, a bit more confidence in Doc to do the job than Bueno because I don't know what that's Hugo Bueno. I don't know what's gone on with him because he just looks. A shadow, it's some people saying it's fitness, but I, mm. I don't think it's fitness. I think it looks more of a confidence thing. Because yeah, I, I, I agree. It was, mate, that stint he had before he had the injury and stuff. He was, he was good, man. I think, I think what it was at the, that time that he came to the squad as well. I think his debut was Palace away yeah. under Steve Davis, and things were just not good there. Things couldn't have really got much worse. And obviously, he, he had a couple of. Good, I mean, he got the assist on his uh, on his first start, uh, and then obviously with Lopetegui coming in, you could say that's like the Spanish factor. He helped, you know, helped him kick on a little bit. Um, but yeah, I think the injury's not helped, but it is definitely a confidence thing. I think he's thrown it at the deep end, started off really well and just built on that, whereas he's just slowed down a little bit now. So um, it'd be interesting with, I don't think Algeria, Algeria will lose tonight, but at the time of recording, they're just kicking off their final AFCON group game. If they do lose, which like I said, I don't think they will, Algeria will be out. I don't know how soon... I know he could be back, but it'd be interesting to see if he'd be available for the West Brom game on Sunday. I think he'd be available. I don't think he'd start though. No, nah, but um, I, I don't like I said. I don't think they'll leave. But some big teams are already out of Afcon. To be fair, I think Algeria should be okay. It's wild this Afcon, mate. I think they all are, but this one's just mental. <laughs> no, I've not watched. I mean, I've not watched much of it, but I've seen some of the results. I think even one of the games, Cameroon game today, was absolutely mental. Apparently, so fans are nuts, mate. Fans, are nuts. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, uh, Mateus Cunha was centre of attention for pretty much most of the. Uh, most of the evening. Talk me through that booking, mate, for uh, persistent uh, infringement, despite not making a foul before the yellow card. Um, he, he was booked for uh, consistent infringement. Yeah, I, uh, I, I, I can't figure it out. I think the, the 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 first one when we attacked uh, and he got taken out on the halfway line, surely one of the officials, whether it's the linesman or the, the full official, has seen that. And for me, Gilmore should have been booked. And even VAR checked it. I, it wasn't enough to be a red card, of course. No. But the way you watch the replays, Gilmore is literally stopping his run to look over his shoulder to see where Cunha is, and then like yeah, you know, him. yeah, it, it, it's Stonewall. Um, so then Cunha, I think Cunha's daft because I think we left a couple late on Gilmore. I think Dawson was the same as well, which really you know deserve he didn't like. Um, and then Cunha did that. I don't get why he reacted as much as he did. Um, because and and then obviously it was a half time we saw shortly after that, and I honestly thought he was going to get sent off. Um, no. um, even in the second half, of, you know, he's on a tight rope for that last 45. All it needed to be was a misplaced tackle, and he would have been off and you know, missed, missed the West the West Brom game, which would have been quite funny considering some of his comments about playing in the derby <laughs> as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just I've never seen obviously he's quite a, an enthusiastic player and so, so on. I think I've not really seen him lose his temper as he did there. Um, but yeah, for me, the, the level of consistency, I felt towards the end of that first half, Graham Scott lost the game a little bit. Not Graham Scott, Scott, Craig Porson. He's, a, he's, an, he's an emotional Brazilian though, and they're all they're all the same. They all get a bit a little bit um a little bit tied up in in the emotion. But yeah, you could say you could say he was lucky to still be on the pitch, mate, with the the way he was not obviously the decision was wrong initially, but the way he was like moaning and whinging at the referee. You could easily yeah, see Craig Paulson with, just thinking, you know what, fuck this, you're going. Yeah, with the track record of some referees this season, yeah. I'm very, very surprised at that. I think, I can't remember who the referee was, but Dallow um, against Liverpool, I think Michael it was. Oliver. Yeah, yeah. Um, Michael Oliver, I mean, he did it with Martin Ali against Oliver, us. Yeah, yeah. I, I think Michael Oliver, although he's sort of a lord to his own at times, but he he's, he's like that. It doesn't matter, you know, if you come in my face and, well, Whatever. If you come up to my face and um, <laughs> and, and start something, um, I normally, give, I normally give you a kiss. I don't give you a card. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. That's what the uh, Philippe said. I was talking about yeah, Joey yeah. Barton. He liked, yeah. you know, he, liked, he liked to come in your face. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think you go that far, Philippe. <laughs> 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 oh, what, what's that? Fourteen minutes in, fantastic, yeah, brilliant. Um, let's less about coming in faces um, <laughs> and move on to the, the the midfield two. I thought Lamina was pretty quiet, mate. I, I think he looks a little bit off mm. off the pace a little bit, which is as expected with him having a bit of a layoff um, after the passing of his father. But in the same breath, mate, Tommy Doyle looking like a snip at five million quid. He's He's everywhere, but he's one thing I do like about him is he gets the ball and he wants to shift it. He wants to get rid of it. Yeah, and I, that, I think that obviously, counter. yeah, l- l- the Lamina situation. I agree. I, I felt well, the issue was I say issue. You know, he set himself a very very high standard just before Christmas. You know, he had pretty much two back back to back man of the match performances. Yeah. I felt he did okay. I think we needed his steal against Brentford during the week. Uh, probably played a little bit longer than Gary O'Neill would have wanted him to. Um, and again yesterday, but I think you look at that bench in general uh, yesterday, and I said it on the review, I, the, the, there's good players on there, players that can come on and make an impact, but there wasn't anyone on that picture. I think you're going to come on and completely change this game for me. And I think that's what we'll need to try and do, get at least another one or two players in before the end of the window that can do that. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, with, with Lamina, I felt hopefully it's just a, you know, almost trying to get back into the swing of things. I felt there were one or two sloppy passes, but and and, and the same at the same time, I felt there were a couple of crucial challenges and he, he did help make the game tick as well. But Tommy Doyle, like you said, I think when Jao Gomez is back next week against Manchester United, that's going to be a really interesting situation and a, a difficult situation for Gary O'Neill to decide. Um, been, you know, and I think when some of the players come back from the international duty, he's going to have a real selection headache. Because you'd assume Huang will be back, yeah, you know, available. And then you've got like, you know, you've got to pick between Neto, Huang, Cunha, potentially a new striker, Sarabia and Belgard. And now with the midfield three as well, Tommy Doyle um, really kicking on. And I, I, I like it. I know a couple of weeks ago I made the comparisons to, to Neves because someone had mentioned that. And I've, I still don't think it's it's an awful shout. Um, you know, we've uh. still not seen... We've still not seen that set piece ability from the edge of the area that I'm begging to see like a free kick for, for him. But you say that though. You say that though, how many how many free kicks he'd never actually score? Like success, right? I think, yeah, I no, think no, the, uh, the, uh, delivery is fantastic. No, no, I, 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 that I didn't necessarily mean his free kick ability compared to Nevers. No, I didn't mean his free kick ability compared to Nevers, but I wanted to see Tommy Doyle's free kicks because that's what he's, you know, he, yeah, he scored yeah, a few not, goals. Yeah. Um, but in terms of overall play, the way he makes a game tick. Um, and his distribution of the ball is is really good. And like you said, for the price that we are hopefully set to pay, it's a it's a no brainer. Definitely, definitely. Neto getting getting there, isn't he? I don't think he, I think he still looks a little bit rusty. His decision making's a little bit up. I don't I don't think he's the best decision maker anyway. Um, that obviously you can improve on that, but he. He gave Brighton problems all night. I know, I know, TNT gave him their man of the match, which I'm not sure I agreed with. Um, but he looks mm. like he's nearly there, doesn't he? Back to full fitness and looks like he's. I mean, he was blowing out his ass, but they got 90 minutes out of him. I know O'Neill said it, they, that wasn't the plan. Same well, with Lamina as well. <laughs> yeah, he was, a, he was a big threat. Yeah, um, I think ever since he's come back, I think the the game against Everton when he came off the bench, he looked really lively, and against. Um, Brentford as well. When he, you know, came off, he, he he's looking good and he's looking like he's very, very close to the level where before he got injured. To be honest, and I think <clears throat> I agree with you. I don't think he's his end product, and this is that sounds really daft to say, seeing as the numbers that he's got this year. But his end product has never been one of his best points. Um, but that decision making, yeah, it still doesn't need to necessarily improve. I just think. Well, no, it does because I, I I think you know one or two of the balls into the box were very good. I mean, the Cunha chance right at the start of the the first uh, second half was unlucky not to have got the assist for that. I think you know he played the ball. I think it was Samedo to Neto and then Neto to Cunha when he tried to round steal and it just got that touch all wrong, uh, mm-hmm. Cunha. Uh, but the once or twice where I felt Neto could have opened his body up and, and had a shot and been a little bit more selfish. In the first um, half, and he could have just angled his body and exactly that. Yeah, that was the one. Yeah. Um, but then, and then I think there was the one where he knocked, he crossed it, and it was like a, a cross come shot where Steele sort of tips it round the post. For me, if I saw that, I'm thinking right, if I can get down the by, towards the byline here, Steele's going to obviously edge off his line, and similar to the Luton goal, just smash it near post. Um, I know it's easier said than done, but um, I felt 
it's good that he wants to pass and try and get the assist, but at the same time, I think at times you've got to test the keeper and be a little bit more selfish. Um, mm. But he's, he's scoring Sunday, definitely. You, you try run at that speed and then nick it near post, mate. Yeah, no. Nah, <laughs> nah. nah, I know what you mean. He's such a good ball striker as well, though. I'd like to see him have a, have a go from distance a bit more. O'Neill said in the, in the uh, post match that that one he had in the first half, which he it's struggled close. with. Yeah, he said he works a lot on them in training, and we've seen it, haven't we? Mm-hmm. Um, that one I mean at Bournemouth, he hit the bar, didn't he? In a similar, um, in a similar scenario, but um, happy with the performance overall, Dave. I mean, I would have snapped your hand off for a point before, and um, so yeah, I'm, I'm more than happy. Clean sheet like as well, first time Brighton haven't scored at the Amex in the league since February, yeah, yeah. I think very, very good. Um, look, uh, you want to you want three points in every game, and I think we could have easily come away with three points, but like you said earlier on, it, it you know, Brighton had some good chances, hit the post themselves, one or two cleared off the line. I felt it was an even game, I felt a draw was probably a fair result. Um, but Gary O'Neill went with a plan, stuck to the plan, and ultimately it, it got us a point, and you know. Decent, you know, we, we, we're not far away from those that, that sort of level now. And I know Brighton play a completely different style of football to us, but you look at the league table now, you know, decent running. We've got some good fixtures coming up. I say good, tough fixtures, but if they go our way, we've, we've been in a very, very nice place in the league. Yeah, Wolves are 11th now, um, level on points with Newcastle. Um, so yeah, it's uh, Brighton is seventh on 32 points. So it depends on the scenarios, doesn't it? It could get Europe. I'm not saying we're talking about Europe, but I think if if come like the end of February and we're still in amongst like 10th, 11th, then I think you probably be, probably that's what the aim would be, wouldn't it? Yeah, you look at you look at our next two as well. I think in the league, it's United and Chelsea, isn't it? And I'm not saying yeah. we're going to walk away with six points, but if you can get four points out of those two games, you, you're in a very decent position there. Um, putting pressure on United, be clear of Chelsea and probably. United at home as well, I fancy you'll say. Yeah, Jared Gillett as referee. <laughs> Never lost the game, he got Jared Gillett, have we? Uh, well, that's why, I, I, obviously, I put, we put that tweet out earlier on Talking Wars and the amount, oh my God, that, Mate, that's the end of it. fucking that. Robert Plant in VAR and people <laughs> still know. No, but then I, I, everyone was like, oh, that's the end of our unbeaten run at home. And then I was like... I can't. And then I saw a picture of him when he refed us against Burnley earlier this season when, you know, we, we won 1-0. And I thought, I wonder how many games we've actually... And the only other game I could remember is obviously the Southampton game. So on transfer marks, it's pretty good because you can see all the games that he's mm. refereed. And it showed, obviously, that we'd never lost. And then I checked and I thought, yeah, but he shafted us on VAR, hasn't he? But, we've, you know, won one draw one lost one with him as, as VAR as well. So... Yeah, we haven't got the worst uh, record um, with him officiating, to be fair. He's still shit, but... Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. People are people will always moan wherever it is. Looks like um, Nuno's getting a few favours from George Mendes already. Might have just seen that uh, uh, Gio Ryan is going to Nottingham Forest on loan. Yeah, it'll be interesting. I saw. I, I mean, I don't know all the ins and outs, but I saw someone say that. Well, he's not fit. Is he? He's not. I mean, he's not in and out. And he's got a few attitude room. problems as well. So it'll be interesting to see how Nuno deals with that as well. So because mm-hmm. we were linked with him, weren't we? But I think you had that confirmed that it was it was bollocks. Yeah, very quick, very quickly confirmed uh, yeah. that it was a load of rubbish. So interesting, interesting. Do you want to talk about the other Albion, mate? The yeah. lesser known. Oh dear, <laughs> I am, I am shitting myself, <laughs> and I don't know why. Because anyone who hasn't got an interest in either Wolves or Albion keeps telling me that you'll walk all over them, you'll batter them, the shit. But it's just, I'm nervous. I couldn't sleep last night thinking about it. That's how like nervous I am. There's a lot of there's a lot riding on this for me considering where I live and the yeah. amount of shit I've had to go through the last 27 years. Probably soon to be 28, but <sighs> it's 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 a huge game. Ticket came in the post today, buzzing. Did you only just come my, my game Saturday morning? You know. Yeah, but you're Wolverhampton, aren't you? So it's probably closer. Oh. But yeah, right. Yeah, uh, I was I was on the verge of messaging Wolves help saying, "Where's this ticket?" Yeah. <laughs> um, but Dave, not one at the Hawthorne since the year I was born, 1996. You were a, a mere thought, weren't you, at that point? Um, <laughs> yeah, a little, uh, little twinkle in, in your dar. But Albion have got a few, few injuries and a couple of a couple of players away. Oh, sorry, one player away. At Afcon in Grady Diangana could return, dependent on how Congo get on tomorrow. I think they just need a point against lesser opposition. So, again, very similar situation to Aiton Ori, but it's it's probably both likely they'll stay there. Matt Phillips is out. Semi Ajoy is out. Um, Josh Madger is out. 
I know that Adam Reach came off at the weekend injured and Yukoshlu came off with a back spasm. So they've got quite a few of their 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 their, their, their main players. I know Dean Garner has picked up this season, but they have got Tom Fellows, who's a um, who's a young winger that they've got. Who I'm told he's um, he's very good. He's only got six months left on his deal. And it could be likely that he leaves, but. Albion, great at home. So it's not looking good. I keep, I'm gonna, I'll be talking about Wolves in a minute, but Albion are great at home. They've only lost twice in the league all season. And uh, although they've been very poor away from home, Corbran seems to get it right in the big games day. So with all that considered, what's your thoughts on Sunday, 11.45? Flipping heck, you like to uh, give us the positives. Didn't you? I, I suppose you gave us that tea news. Um, I... Uh, I, I already knew about the Albion's home form. I saw, obviously, they lost to Norwich, I think, at the weekend, and there was a lot of discontent on their social media, on, on, on Twitter and stuff. And I thought, oh, hold on, here we go. Um, but I, I had a thought earlier, and the last time I had a thought like this was when I, I thought in my head that I'd, I'd uh, captain Cole Palmer on my FPL, and I didn't, and he smashed it. He, you know, he did really well. And my thought today was, you remember right at the start of the Brian game, we did that little kickoff. And it, it, Sarabia thought, you know, it was a little tactic and, and Sarabia got a decent, half decent shot away. I thought yeah. we're scoring. With, if we get kick off at the start, we're scoring within the first 20 seconds. And I've got a <laughs> feeling, I've got a feeling we're doing 4 now. You, you've got to be careful here, mate, because you're going to get clipped up. No, I, I, they can clip, I'm not saying it's going to be 4 I've just got to, like in my head, I've yeah. had a vision. It's going to be, I know it will be a much tougher game. but I, I just think it'll be put, really tight, mate. The psychic, you know, of me. Um, I mean, at the start of the month, I thought Ekatiko was going to score the, the winning goal. So that's obviously not going to happen anyway. So, um, no, it's going to be tough. I just think we need an early goal. Settle the nerves, like, really, really early on. Um, and obviously then West Brom have got to come out and attack because you would assume we'd have a lot of the ball. Um, but I, I really don't know what to expect. It's hard. When it's a cup game, form goes out the window. They'll be up for it. They're, a lot of their fans are making out. They're not bothered. They're making out. Wolves aren't even in the black. Wolves aren't oh, even in the, the black. Thing, it's, they just they mentioned all the news just now. I was like, is it a slow news day or what? Like, you know. So, um, the, 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 yeah. The thing is, though, that's a sort of excuse. Like, every Albion fan that I know who is born and bred West Brom, so it's always been it's always been Wolves. They don't like the Villa, but it's always been Wolves. And they're very nervous because they think they're going to get battered. So, obviously, the the stuff around, oh, Villa's the bigger rival, or it's not even the Black Country Derby, seems like the things you would talk about if you weren't confident going into a game that you're going to get a result, or you were nervous about what was to come. I think probably... In our lifetime, Dave, this is the, probably the best opportunity that we've had to go to the Hawthorns and get a result. We've obviously different different divisions. Every time we played each other, it's been we've been in the same league, haven't we? Even in the FA Cup Very last close. time, Wolves were both in the and Albion were both in the Championship. But it's um, I think it's gonna I think it's gonna be a tight game, mate. Uh, I, I can't I can't see it being a two or three goal margin. Of course, I would love that to be, but. I, I just can't see it. I think it'll be a scrappy game. I think it'll be stop-start. I think Albion will try and get under the skin of a couple of our players. You've seen the likes of Sarabia lose a head a little bit. Cunha can lose his head. Lamina. I think that they'll be trying to play on little things like that to try and gain a um, a bit of a um, a bit of a margin. Margin? Not sort of the word. Anyway, uh, a bit of a couple of gains over us. But yeah. Gary O'Neill, Dave, has been very vocal since the the tie was the tie was made around making sure the players know how big this is and i think i'm you know i'm glad we've got a british manager in this situation in o'neill because you know he's never played in a black country derby but he knows he knows what it means um and i'm thankful that we've got and it could go against us in terms of their hot-headed nature but you've got the likes of Cunha, you've got the likes of lamina who just live for this kind of game the, the difference is from when we played them in COVID to now, when we played them in COVID, they, yeah, although on pa- on, and on paper, we should have been better, but they had a lot of leaders. They had a lot of English players that sort of got what it was. I remember, I think it was Kyle Bartley cleared a corner and he was celebrating. I was like, I looked at that and I thought, we haven't got anyone at the time. We had no one like that. You had Cody, but I think, and even Nuno pulled Cody off the, off the pitch, didn't he, during that game. And that's, <laughs> he did yeah. pull him off, yeah. yeah. Um, and that's when we all thought, I think that was one of the points where we thought, nah, what, like, what's going on? Because Cody was never, you know, was never sort of sacrificed, really. So, uh, 
now we have got those players. I know Cunha's only a young lad, but I mean, he mentioned it. He's played in the Madrid derby. He's played in the Berlin derby. He's played in uh, Brazil, Argentina. You know, so he he understands, you know, rivalry and big matches. Um, I think Neto is the type of player to play up to these occasions as well. So, you know, on paper, you know, unfortunately, football's not played on paper. On paper, we do have a much stronger team and you would hope that with our form, we can get at West Brom and like I said, I think an early goal is crucial because if they have to start attacking us, that's when we can cause them some real damage because they, there'll be spaces in behind. I don't know what they... I, I genuinely couldn't name you five... And I don't mean this in this disrespectful way. I couldn't name you five West Brom players at the moment. So I don't know who's good or bad or talented players or whatever. But play. I'd assume they've got like Kyle Barley or something still playing at the back. You know, yeah, a foot, a got... foot right. him, and, him and Cunha in a foot race. I'm like, come on, there's, surely, surely there's only one winner there. They've got. I love Darnell Furlong and um, yeah. uh, Townsend, the, the fullbacks. I think. Who's that keeper these days? Uh, oh fucking hell! What's he called now? He's a young. He's a young lad. Oh, I don't know. Palmer. Is it Alex Palmer? Anyway, um, it'll probably be Kipre who starts the centre half. He's had a good yeah. season. By, I'm, I'm told again. I'm not watching a lot of West Brom this season, but I've got a lot of mates who are Baggies fans. Kipra's had a good season. Probably Bartley. Yakushlu, if he's not got that back spasm sorted out. If not, it'll probably be Shalaba in the middle. Um, Malumbi's got a knock as well. Uh, who else would they have? They'll have Fellows, who was out at the weekend, who apparently was ill. Um, but there's speculation around his future. Daryl DK, Asante, uh, Thomas Asante. Um, I couldn't I'm name you. Sure. I genuinely not heard of half of these players. I'm not, I don't yeah. mean... I thought Dean Kylie was still in goal, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> <might have been. laughs> um, but yeah, I'm just trying to think who, who, who else they've got. But I, mate, I can see them causing us problems. I mean, there's going to be there's going to be periods in the game where we're, our back's up against the wall. Of course, but yeah. Our away form's been terrible this season. I know it's improved as of late, Dave, but does that, does that not worry you even more? Mm, not really. Not in, in this case, anyway. Um, I've still got full faith and full confidence that we, we we qualify for the next round. And like you said, I don't think it'll be uh, classic or I don't think it'll go 100% out of Gary O'Neill will, will want because West Brom will make life very, very difficult for us. Um, but I think we've got the quality that, you know, we should see, you know, see it through. It's all, it's all about the first goal. I think if Wolves are chasing the game at any point, it's going to be very difficult and it could be a long, long morning slash afternoon. Um <laughs> But if we can if we can get the lead, I'm I'm fully confident that you know we, we should qualify for the next round. How would you line up against these, mate? Would you go unchanged? Uh, an- another another thing to consider as well. I know people were seeing they signed Andy Vyman uh, last week, and people <laughs> yeah. think, you know God, the story's written, but he's cup tied because he played for Bristol City in the uh, in the previous round. So, but how how would you line up with this day? No, no Gomez. Ninety five percent certain there'll be no Wayne Nori, no Bubakar Traore. I think you're going uh, change. I think I think you're going change. You've got possibly a case of Belgard to start. I think sarabi has got the you know they've got the quality. I think I, I think you're starting changed. I think you got to. Danny, like, or maybe even the winner. maybe yeah, maybe Bueno in if you class him if you're going to have him as almost your cup defender possibly. But I think you, you can't probably... you can't drop him for you can't drop him for Dawson against the Albion. Yeah, well, true, very true. Um, I think so I'll, give him a lot think of Well, that's the, like you look at the players here. Do you think they'll give him a stick? Do you? Yeah. How did he leave on bad terms? Of... Say again, mate. Did he leave on bad terms? or? Um, he, he forced the move, but they went down. So... Oh, right, OK. Um, yeah. well, I think if you look out of our players, Saul will be up for it. Dawson will be up for it. Doc will get it. Lamina will be up for it. Um, Doyle would get it mm. and be up for it. Now, joking. Um <laughs> Cunha, Neto, Sarabia. I think we. this is the difference between, I look at the team back then compared to now, we've got players that under, will understand it and will be up for it. Whereas back in the COVID days when um, form and morale was sort of rock bottom anyway, we had a team of players that, even the Neves is at the time, I just don't think they sort of would have appreciated it because there was no atmosphere or anything. This is I different. That season though, the, play, the players hidden, you could just tell it was like that... Even Nuno, like three two down, and if you're sitting sat in the dugout like that, like he's just like like a dog being waiting to put out his misery. And I, I think it's it's different. 
You know, that, the writing was... I mean, even the game at the Orphans, we couldn't even beat them. Yeah. Um, and again, I had a, very, a, a poor team compared to Wolves at, at the time. But it's gonna be it's gonna be a tough, tough, tough game, mate. I um I'm not I'm not confident at all. I think if you were but we're thinking emotionally about it, aren't we? We're not thinking yeah. logically. Um and I think I think it would be a big upset if, if Albion were to be us. The pressure's on Wolves and the pressure should be on Wolves, really. Because the Premier League side coming up against a championship team and, and a half decent Premier League t- team um at the minute. So I would have just loved this fixture with Aitnori Nuri there and, and Gomez, so we could have you know pick from a full strength team because I think Aitnori Nuri does give us give us a lot lot more to. I think I think there'll be pressure a lot of pressure on Albion though, probably more pressure than you realise because I think I might use this example a couple of weeks ago, but when I watched the Newcastle Sunderland game, obviously he was at Sunderland as well. Newcastle had a lot of the ball, attacking a lot, and I thought for the first 15, 20 minutes, I thought Sunderland could do something here, but they cannot make one error. They've got to be like a little bit like us against Brighton, little you know, almost immaculate defensively. Can't you mm. can't cause an error. As soon as they made an error, I think they scored an own goal. Suddenly like fell apart and they were just all over the place. I think West Brom now, they're gonna have especially the defenders are gonna have that pressure on them. They cannot make an error against Wolves. If you make a misplaced pass and you or you give the ball to Neto or Cunha, they will hurt you. So that pressure is gonna be on that West Brom defense if again, first 20 minutes, half an hour, they make an error. And we create a chance or score an opportunity, their heads will be gone. So that's what we've just got to carry, keep putting that pressure on them early on. But yeah, it's going to be a going to be a really really tricky game. I'm looking for I'm looking forward to it though. I am looking forward to it. Oh, I'm not man. I just don't like. I'm a nervous wreck watching the games at the best of times. This is going to be even worse. Um, even even like last night, mate. I'm sat there and everyone will know it's a bite of my nails anyway. But I was sat there last night like. <sighs> What's the matter with you? I, I don't know. Like, if you what if you uh, people will start to notice this now. If I watch games on the TV at home, and then I'll do a video straight after, my face will be bright red because I think part of me inside does stress stress about it. But if we lost last night, or if we lost last t- Sunday, I'll be like, "Fuck's sake, forget about it and just move on." Whereas back, like you know, like back in the day, I used to get wound up more about my kids' team losing on a Sunday than I would the Wolves, and I don't think that is in a not that I love Wolves and not passionate about Wolves. I just think I've sort of learned to deal with the disappointment, really. Mm. So I think my situation is different to yours in this case. Because like you say, you live locally to West Brom. A lot of know a lot of West Brom fans. Yeah. So I my, my one of my best mates is a West Brom fan, but thankfully he's not the type to sort of, well, I don't think he's the type to wind me up and be messaging me about it nonstop. So. Yeah, well, I, um, obviously from West Brom, but I went up the pub on Saturday night. Still haven't drunk, mate. It's been over a month. Still yeah, trying to like, hang on in there. I think I'll be having a drink Sunday if we do win. Um, Before to calm the nerves or not? Fuck, oh, man. I need probably something a bit stronger. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone's got a number for something? <laughs> um, but oh, that was just insufferable. And normally I, c- I can just I can stomach it and I'll get on with them and have a bit of banter because it's like it's real now. I feel like I'm in the zone. Mm. And Oh, it's like pressure's off us. We don't even, we're not even asked about it. Yeah, we won't even sell out that time, whichever game, big uh, little game. That, that means they're worried, mate. That is, that's they're scared of us. Not that's none of that bollocks. But normally I'd just be like, yeah, whatever. But I was like, fucking God, it. <laughs> <laughs> me and you outside right now. But I'd, 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 love, I'd love to be able to get one over on them because it's been as, as black country derbies go, mate, it's been a pretty shit existence for the both of us. Mm. Um, because we just we just don't seem to. Be. I mean, we have great results against Sevilla. But yeah, we do. Uh, I always predict a, a good result against the Villa, but we never, we never, other than COVID, we've never had to ever talk about the Albion, have we? Or do a podcast on the Albion? So this is a uh, fresh meat, really. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it, man. I've never, I've, I've been to the Hawthorns. I watched games at the Hawthorns, but never, never at Molyneux or the Hawthorns seen a Black Country derby. So it's a whole new experience to me. So um, I'm looking forward to it either way. I've been to one and it was in the Premier League and it, I think it might have been 2-0. Do I saw them? It might have been the Championship. No, it was... Them, sure. obviously. I was... I, I weren't... I, I, I weren't very old. I think James Morrison might have scored. Oh, I can't... I can't I can't remember now. Um, but yeah, it's going to be... It's going to be a real tough game. 11.45 kick-off, Dave. Um, what's your plans afterwards if we... Uh, 
So um, we... After, I'll probably go for a few drinks. Yeah, definitely. I, I mean, I'm driving on. I'm driving up to the game. Um, undisclosed location where I'm parking the car. So any Albion fans watching this can't can't go for me. Um, <laughs> uh, and yeah, I'll probably drive back to Wolverhampton after drop my car off at home and then go up to town for a, a few Bibrogenies. How about if we lose? <laughs> Straight home, never to be spoken about again. Podcast cancelled, <laughs> channel closed down, <laughs> deactivated. Yeah, no, nah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it, mate. What part? No, I was gonna say part of me wants a replay, but I don't. I just want to be him, just get it, get it over and done with. Be him on Sunday. Yeah, the one that I went to, I've just had a look. It was 2011. Chris Brunt and Peter Adam Winger. <sighs> he loved a goal against us, didn't he? Adam Winger. Do you want to? Uh, so Albion's Albion's team that day was. Ben Foster, Billy Jones, Gareth McCauley, Jonas Olsen, Stephen Reid, Paul Sharner, Chris Bunt, Malumbu, Simon Choi, baller. Streets won't forget. Jerome you Thomas. Trial, you, know. you remember that? Yeah, I know. Yeah. Jer- Jerome Thomas and Shane Long. Our team was... Fuck it, it's stuck. Wayne Hennessy, Christoph Berra, Richard Stearman, Roger Johnson, Stephen Ward, Adam Hamill, <laughs> Carl oh, Emery, Matt Jarvis, Millie Ash, O'Hara and Kevin Doyle. Who would play right back, Stearman? Must have been. That's an awful side. Yeah, that is. Uh, did we go yeah. down that year, or did we? St- or not? Mm, what was that? Twenty eleven. Would have been. Oh no, it was a five one year. We went down it. Yeah, it would have been the um, season before. Flipping that team's awful, man. Premier League, yeah, three one. Yeah, because we beat him in the league at home, didn't we? Because Guardiola scored once, Fletcher scored twice. Yeah, and then yeah, the, the season after that was the. Uh, no, that was the the five one season, mate. Oh, that was that was, was, just, uh, oh, that was yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Reverse fixture, but um, no trains from Wolveram- Wolverhampton to Birmingham, I believe. Mm. So um, it's going to be quite difficult for people to get there if they're not getting the coach or the uh, tram or the tram. But I'm going to get I'm going to get a taxi down. But I uh, I think I mean I've not had a drink for quite a while. I was trying to like get, get until March because I'm going to a stag do then, but I think I might need some at Sunday, mate. Just something to settle me down, or or Maybe. a cigarette or such, something. <laughs> <laughs> Medic needed West Bromwich. You know? <laughs> no, none of that. But yeah, I'm 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 shitting myself, Dave. Yeah, I think you're gonna have to calm me down and console me. It'll, it'll be sound, mate. It'll be it'll be sound. It'll be sound. Once you get in there, like I said, early goal, and you'll be uh, you'll be sound, mate. I'm hoping. So, Dave, final prediction. Black Country Derby. Walls, three, West Brom, one. And who's your first goal scorer? Pedro Neto. Nice. Nice. Do you want to go on the questions? Yeah, let's um, do it. Let's do it. Andrew Hadfield has asked, if we do so on a true number nine who can score, who drops out, one of the forwards or a defender? I think it's I think it's one of the forwards if I'm honest. You keep, I think you keep the back five. I think I think you keep the shape. Yeah. Um, I, it's hot. This is what I was saying right uh, earlier on about you know the options. It's going to be a real selection headache. Um, I would probably say at the moment out of the current starting free Sarabia. Hmm. I think he's. I think, I think he's. Neto, he prefers Cunha off the left, doesn't he? And we've seen that yeah. mostly the last few games where we've had like Bellegarde through the middle, Neto through the middle last night. You obviously, mm. but I think I don't know if it was you agreed with me or some someone agreed with me that I prefer Cunha off the left anyway. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, mm. I didn't think we saw it enough. I no, but when he, when he has played there, it looks it looks a bit more natural. Yeah. Then you can bring a striker and it's got either decent, at least decent work rate or decent turn of pace. You can be quite fluid with that front for anyway. Mm. Um, but yeah, that's what it's I, uh, I watched the uh, Sheffield United West Ham game the other day, and I know I've given Danny Ings a lot of stick, but he looked pretty good to be honest. <laughs> Come on, did he? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and I think he started because they've got yeah, quite a few injuries. Injury, Bo- yeah. I know Bowen was back, but what about maybe he, because? Obviously, uh, Kudus is coming back now for West Ham. He might they might reopen, you know, the opportunity for Rings to leave on loan. Mm. Who knows? Who knows? I had a feeling earlier that we'd get a, a juicy rumor whilst doing the podcast, but it's very it's quiet, quiet, isn't it, at the minute? Awfully quiet still. It's only just over a week to go. Yeah, but what going off what O'Neill said yesterday for me that was like something's pretty close. Mm-hmm. 
But to be fair, there, there have been some rumours and, and transfers that have moved quite quickly over the last couple of days, as in, like, it's been rumoured the one yeah, day and done the next. On the bench yesterday, he's in, uh, in Spain today. I mean, that was, it was pretty, it was reported, I think, Saturday that it was pretty much close anyway. Um, but then, what, yeah, when I saw him on the bench, mate, he, like up on Twitter, he must have been shattered, man. Tra- Travelling back from Brighton last night, and then he would have been on a plane pretty early on this morning to Spain. Um, but, yeah, things can move quickly. We've seen that before. Be interesting to see how he does there, mate. It's a big, it's a big line. I, I, I sort of feel like... MLS. Yeah, yeah, and he did well in the MLS. This almost feels a little bit like, you know, Arsenal with Saliba. Like, they obviously signed him sort of realised he wasn't quite ready and had a couple of loan yeah. spells out. This would be interesting. It's a big step up, but that is a good team and a good level to play at. You could arguably say that they're, in terms of quality, their level, if, I mean, I don't know how, historically, they're, you'd probably say they're towards the top end of the, the Lille Liga. I don't know how well they're doing at the moment, but I wouldn't say it's a bad signing for them. Yeah, be like top to, 10. I because the Emery left it now because they weren't and it gone a little bit sour. The 14th at the minute, um, it's not a bad level like that. That yeah. you could say that you know they'd be able to compete in the Premier League. So you know that for me that level's all right. Yeah, they've got a as long as he's playing games. Yeah, some of the, I mean they've got Alexander Swaloff. If anyone's just, I'm doing a thin air, but anyone had his uh, team of the week for uh, for Midgetland, it was superb. Oh, no, yeah. oh, no, um, our friend Gonzalo. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We all seem to be striking a bit of a uh, relationship with Villarreal, mate. Two deals that have gone through uh, very quickly. Mm-hmm. I'm just looking at this, looking at the squad. Anyone we uh, we could fancy? Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> I mean, they've got Alberto Moreno, Raúl Albiol, Juan Foyth. Um, that's, that's Premier League rejects, isn't it? No man. So who else have they got? Um, Parejo, Eric Boye, Sol- Sol- Gerard Moreno. Well. He, mate, Moreno used to be a backsman. I don't know how he's yeah. got on this season, but. Did anyway. Swaloff used to play in the Prem as well? Am I making that? Yeah, up? Palace. Palace. Yeah. 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 Um, Adrian, uh, I mean, apologies if I, if I butchered your name. What are you looking at? Akoi? Adrian Akoi? With Samado contributing, um, continuing to perform, does Hoover any, have any first team chance next season? Oh, I don't think he does personally. I, I, I mean, not a big watcher of Stoke, but normally you kind of get fed back if. A player's gone out and learned has done really well, but there doesn't seem to be any signals to suggest that. I think he's doing his job at the moment and like doing it like playing at level expected. I've not heard much had much praise, but at the same time, I've not heard much seen much discontent. Um, I don't know. I just, depends because one of the reasons like Bruno Large had a big fallout with Keanu Hoover was that Hoover thought he 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 should have been first team level and competing with Samado for places whereas we all saw that he was far from it so um i don't know it really depends i think gary O'Neill, i don't think gary o'neill would have seen him um so maybe it's something to look at in the preseason. uh but at the moment i don't know it's unlikely I, I think it's unlikely that he um breaks in to be number one choice next season a player who's doing quite well on loan now dave and in recent weeks is chicania another stoke no. reject <laughs> yeah no, I'll be again. He needed game time this year. He needed yeah. a full season. Um, I liked him when he had that, that, that six months with Wolves. Yeah, yeah. So did I. I, I think like, maybe he'd be a great option at the moment with the way that we play. Like last night, you think for the last twenty minutes or so, him coming off the bench would have been quite mm-hmm. exciting to see. So full season, get him up to back up to confidence, match sharpness, and then um, you know see see what he does in the summer. My my keyboard's packed up, Dave. But could you just check how Algeria are getting on for me, please? Yeah, I can uh, I'll check cost. I, I I think they're playing like the team who are the worst in the group, to be honest. So um, they're losing 1 0. So there you go. <laughs> that, hey, that is like genuinely, that is mad. So they're bottom Good of the group. Man. But even if they, even if they draw, if Algeria draw, they'd be on three points and, and they'd still be out because Burkina Faso and and Angola are beating Burkina Faso 1-0. So as Norwich it stands, as well, didn't they? Yeah, as it stands at 20 to 9 and the, the almost half time Algeria are out of AFCON. That's a big shock as well because you've got to have them as one of the favorites Morocco as yeah, well. A lot of good teams are out man. Like a lot of, like I think um Ivory Coast are out, Ghana are out. So, yeah, a lot of, a lot of good teams out so far. Mm. 
Next question. Nothing but Neto. Does Gomez get back into the starting eleven when his suspension's over? Doyle has been playing excellently since he's come back into the side, showing glimpses of both Matinho and Neves. That one was sent in by Dave as a party. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, mate, he's only he's only probably only a couple of games away from someone else getting suspended, so that's probably when he's going to come back in. Yeah. Um, no, again, like uh, I actually speak to nothing but Neto quite a lot. We have some good chats about the wars. Um, so we've, we Does have got quite. A... Like Neto or... So uh, I've never seen. He's, he's got the picture of Neto. So unless he's like, I you know identical to him, I don't know. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a good selection uh, headache for Gary O'Neill to have, and I don't envy his choice. I would have assumed that he'll go with Lamina and Gomez next week against United, which will be so harsh on Tommy Doyle. But I think that game is more built for Jao Gomez. Um, but I think you've got a fantastic player to come off the bench or start games in certain situations. Now, and Tommy Doyle has really stepped up. Donny Nagel has said, and I don't know if that's one of those ones that catches you out, like Hugh Janus or... Bend over. Yeah, bend over or, you yeah. One of those, Drew Peacock. Um, <laughs> guys, a tremendous point last night. Posted in my contempt for Samedo numerous times to you in the past, but the guy was unreal last night. Neto was man of the match, but should have been Samedo. My question is, with Spurs supposedly in for Gomez, would you take the 30 million or reject it? I mean, I'd take 30 million for a loan till the end of the season, but <laughs> for a permanent transfer, mate, no, 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 no. And I, I can't believe that that's a figure even being touted because... You know what, though? I've got a bad feeling about wall selling players. I feel like we don't sell very well in terms of like value. No, but we haven't seen... I think the new... The Neves one was obviously ex- exceptional, but that could have been like a, a one-time thing. Mendes, Saudi, Mendes, Saudi Mendes has got quite heavy influence in Saudi. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. New, Nunes was probably... You would have wanted maybe to squeeze a bit more, but I think with that, you got the Doyle thing in return. Mm. It wouldn't have surprised me if the Santi Bueno thing was part of that deal as well, uh, with it being part of the City group. Um, but this this summer will be interesting because you would assume a lot of interest in our players. Neto is going to be the big one for me. If he carries on with the form that he's, he's getting, I think you have to demand at least 60 million for Neto. I think more, mate. It depends on how he finishes the season. I think 60 to 70 million. I think teams, because of his injury record, it'll take a little bit off his price. But then going back to this with Jao Gomez, you've seen a lot of teams have players join. Well, Lavi is a perfect example. I don't know if he's been injured or what. Yeah, I was, yeah. The amount he went for, to Chelsea for was absolutely ridiculous. And in a way, I don't think Chelsea will ever spend stupidly like that again on certain players. Um, but Jao Gomez, for me... By the end of this season, he's going to have a year and a half experience in the Premier League. Still very, very young. Defensive midfielders, which aren't a top defensive midfielder, isn't easy to come across. Uh, again, I think you double that 30. I think you're looking, well, I think 55. 50 to 60 million, yeah. Save so Neto, what's he on now? Seven assists, two, three goals? I think eight assists. Or is eight it seven? assists. Yeah, in all comps, eight, sorry. Yeah. Say if he ended the season in all comps, say 13 assists. Six goals. How much do you think he's going for? Um, and who who buys him? Because there's only so many clubs who could afford him. Well, I saw oh, a Spurs. Yeah. I saw a Spurs fan say it earlier. And I said, like, no disrespect to Spurs. I'm not saying you don't have the money, but Levo Levy Levy will not spend that money on one specific player. I don't think. I can't see it happening. So, City, Liverpool. Can't see United. I think it'd be City, Liverpool, or Arsenal. They, they are free it, within within England. I could, I could see Neto playing for someone like Madrid. To be fair, as well. <laughs> yeah, right, back with Totti Gomez if the uh, if the rumours are true. <laughs> <laughs> My God, um, George Mendes has had his uh, had his had his gob, gob open again this week, hasn't he? Against uh, up against about Neto saying that if he wouldn't have had the injury, he would have gone for hundred million. Yeah, I think. Um... Well, Absolutely, so me up. Yeah, yeah. He, he, the whole thing was about. I think it was. He, he spoke a lot about Wolves players. He was on about how how we'd sold players, and you know, Wolves have made profit. It was like Cavalero and Costa and stuff like that. He mentioned those two quite a lot as well. Isn't it? But um, yeah, interesting. He's obviously very, very highly thought of within guest feud, so that may work in our favour. It may not. Mm. Twenty-five million in the summer. Then. <laughs> yeah. 
North Bank Ryan, final question. Unless there's any more on Twitter, I'll just check because I have to shoot in five minutes. North Bank Ryan has said, how far, far up on the priority list for the summer transfer window is a new goalkeeper with better distribution? Very interesting seeing as we mentioned that at the start of the pod. Mm. Um, I don't have... Obviously, it depends on the rest of the business for this this window. Obviously, it depends on if we get a striker because I think striker is still the number one priority. Unless Silver scores forty goals in Scotland, which I can't see happening, or Sasha, I don't think Sasha is a Wolves player just in general. I think he'll probably move on as well. So I think number one's got to be a striker. I think if you sell Neto for the sixty to seventy million, you've got a lot of decent money to play with. Um, and, and I think in terms of how we sold Nunes and bought in three or four better quality players that arguably made us a better and more balanced team. It does bode well. Um, goalkeeper, goalkeeper will be up for discussion, though. Like I mentioned, you know, it's been something that's been reported quite often now over the last year or so. It was first reported Christmas last year. I think before we'd signed Cunha, they were talking about bringing Gabriel Salina was, was the big rumour that window, I think. And then it was mentioned again with Saar potentially going to uh, Forest as well in the summer. So um, I think it'll be an interesting discussion. Walls will be linked with a lot of young goalkeepers. So I'll be very intrigued this summer to see to see what happens to Saar. I think it, I think it depends on O'Neill's priority in terms of what he, in terms of his, his team and his identity, what he prioritises more. For example, a, a, a wide forward who's good in one-on-ones. If he's given the option right, we can afford a wide forward who's good with 1v1s or a keeper who can play out from the back, what's more important for your philosophy? I think that's probably what it'll come down to. Yeah. And I, I think what we've got to be careful of as well, of course, like the team and the club are in a almost completely different direction at the moment to where we were 12 months ago, is that we don't get into the summer. And then like saying the pipe dream, we, we do qualify for Europe or even if we finish about where we are now, you've got to be careful that, we, okay, well, I think we will lose one or two players in the summer, like big mm. players, guaranteed. But you can't just think, right, we're going to have six or seven new first teams, you know, first team players. The first team is going to look completely different because it probably won't. And you probably don't want it to be either. So I think the morale and everything is so good at the moment. You want to try and keep this core of this squad as good as you can. I think we mentioned it not so much recently, but in times gone by where, you know, we to sign players almost ready-made to replace other players. So if for whatever reason Dawson, you know, moves on in the summer, you've almost got Santi Bueno to walk straight into to, to replace him. And and that's what Wolves need to do. And I think with the midfield as well, you know, we've got a lot of good young players there. And yes, we'll make money on them. But at the moment, you know, we've almost got like a this conveyor belt of players. And that's what Wolves need to make sure they keep doing, really. Yeah. I mean, ideally, like you said, you'd bring in your replacements six, 12 months before that player goes but if, if money allows obviously yeah yeah because that's that that's the problem isn't it when teams know you're desperate for a replacement then they mm. add five or ten percent on top but that's uh unfortunately the way it goes but yeah Dave, that's all we got time for this week i've enjoyed that between the pair of us um i know well before we go on to if we go on to close the show i know what i always say hopefully have a good week and wolves get Three points, whatnot, but I genuinely hope that <laughs> I could swap any of those closing segments for this one if it guaranteed a win, mate. I'm very nervous. I'm very, very nervous. My missus doesn't get it. I said to her, and I said, I couldn't sleep last night. She was on night, so I was just thinking about the game. And she was like, You're pathetic. <laughs> you I, I didn't realize, like, you were so, you were so like, it's in your right. head, man. Lad. Mate, I'm, yeah, real. I'm there. West Bomber in my head, rent through. <laughs> no, I just, I'm not even thinking about that deep too here. I'm not like oh I'm, uh, I'm nervous man my, my dad was texting me last night my, my my dad's coached at a really good level but in terms of like football he's a, he's a plank Um, <laughs> like he's like he's a fucking shit play against the Albion like this I'll fucking turn us over and I was like what? Jesus Christ I know I know but it's just like <laughs> that's proper dar that is yeah proper dar I said you're delusional but then I got into bed and I was like maybe he's got a point <laughs> but no, I am I am nervous, mate. I am nervous. But we we'll, we will be back with a podcast on um next Monday. It depends well, it'll if come, it'll, come really... out, it'll come out Tuesday morning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it, it depends if we're still out from the night before. Um, <laughs> we'll probably be drinking regardless. <laughs> but, um Dave, that's all we got time for this week, mate. Uh, where can people find you should they wish to follow you? 
It's at Dave as a party on Instagram and Twitter. I am M Cooper Wright and Matt Cooper Bites across all platforms. If you enjoy a curry, um, we are talking walls across all other platforms, including the most important one, LinkedIn. But Dave, yeah. hopefully, hopefully next Monday we're recording what's hopefully going to be the most joyous and overzealous podcast we've ever, ever produced after we beat the Albion. But I'm being pessimistic and I'm not so sure, but until next time, look after yourselves. Take care on Sunday because I'm sure it's going to be a feisty one. Um, and make sure if you are going, you sing your art ads for the lads because I know we will be. Take care and up the walls. <laughs>